Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, NASA decides fate of the Starliner. KC-46 refueling curse carries on. Skyview Avionics gets a safety makeover. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talon Lee. Let's get into today's stories. NASA decides fate of Starliner. NASA has confirmed that the Boeing Starliner will make its flight home without astronauts Wilmore and Williams. Wilmore and Williams flew to the ISS in June for what was supposed to be an eight-day stay. Instead, due to several leaks and thruster issues, they have yet to return. While they wait on a solution, they have put themselves to work conducting research, maintenance, and data analysis among the existing ISS crew. NASA has decided to keep the pair on the space station through February of 2025. Then they will join two other astronauts on the Dragon spacecraft assigned to the agency's SpaceX Crew-9 mission. SpaceX and NASA will need to redesign seats and cargo to make room for the duo's personal belongings. And, since their spacesuits are incompatible with the SpaceX port design, two fresh ones will be provided for them. Starliner's uncrewed return is scheduled for early September. The spacecraft was designed for autonomous flight and has completed two successful unmanned missions. NASA had originally remarked that the Starliner could still be capable of delivering the astronauts home in one piece. However, uncertainty in spaceflight seems like an obvious recipe for disaster. This prompted them to change course. After the break, Solar Riser put back on display. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit SureWings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Solar Riser put back on display. The EAA recently put the Maro Solar Riser back on display in their museum. The aircraft has been in their possession for over 40 years. The Solar Riser is the world's first crewed ultralight powered purely by solar energy. It was also only the second solar powered aircraft to ever take flight, just over four years after the uncrewed Astroflight Sunrise. Larry Morrow, a member of EAA Chapter 1, was the Solar Riser's designer and pilot. The design was based on one of Morrow's earlier designs, the UFM Easy Riser. NS-26 mission targets August 29th for launch. Blue Origin recently announced that their crewed New Shepard mission will be lifting off from Launch Site 1, just north of Van Horn, Texas. It will launch around 8 a.m. CDT. It has had 22 successful missions in a row, plus three escape tests. In 2021, the spacecraft began flying humans and has since taken seven crews. The NS-26 mission will be the eighth. The NS-26 journey is expected to last 11 minutes. The crew will blow past the Kármán line at airspeeds over Mach 3. Latvian man extradited for avionics smuggling scheme. 55-year-old Oleg Krishchikov was recently extradited from Latvia to Kansas City to face federal charges. He played a major role in an avionics smuggling operation, circumventing U.S. export laws to supply Russian customers. 
Khrushchev had two co-conspirators, Cyril Gregory Boyanovsky, age 61, and Douglas Edward Robertson, age 56. These two men were both U.S. citizens and Kansas residents. Following the recent conflict, the trio had to use multiple fronts to facilitate the sale, repair, and shipping of advanced U.S. avionics equipment to Russia. SpaceX proposal starts drama with competitors. SpaceX recently opened up a collaboration with T-Mobile to use Starlink satellites for direct-to-cell connection. This has caused pushback from other providers, including AT&T and Verizon, that believe it would create, quote, unacceptable, harmful interference, end quote. The Starlink satellites would essentially be used as a space-based cell tower. The partners intend to use them to increase connectivity in remote locations. Their plan would launch this year with texting capabilities and in 2025 open to voice and data. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. KC-46 refueling curse carries on. A KC-46A Pegasus from McConnell Air Force Base had an incident while refueling an F-15. The cause and scope of the mishap are under investigation. The tanker involved is a part of the 931st Air Refueling Wing. After the incident, units commented that the aircraft declared an emergency near Travis Air Force Base in California. They were able to execute a landing with the boom still down. Details on the incident have yet to be released, though the 931st noted that a portion of the boom broke off and landed near the base. Photos show substantial damage to the bottom half of the boom and tail of the aircraft, which could mean trouble for the F-15 being refueled. These remain unconfirmed by the 931st. The Travis Field was temporarily shut down while personnel responded to the scene. It has since been reopened and no injuries were reported. The KC-46 has been involved in numerous refueling mishaps, with the last occurring merely two months ago. In this, the pilot of the involved F-16 stated that there was a, quote, chunk taken out of its spine due to a too-close breakaway incident, end quote. The tanker, also operated by the 931st, sustained damage and was unable to refuel. The case remains under investigation. After these messages, Skyview Avionics gets a safety makeover. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man, it feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. Welcome back. Skyview Avionics gets a safety makeover. In a recent software update, Dynan announced that they will be adding an emergency glide feature to their avionics. This is compatible with the Skyview HDX software. The Skyview HDX is Dynan's flagship avionics system. It has 7, 10, and 12-inch touchscreen panel options and utilizes the same components as previous Skyview designs, making it easy to switch out for the later model. The addition of the Emergency Glide Tech is a part of Dynan's version 17.1, which was released on August 20th. Another main upgrade in this version is with their SV Com Panel Com Radio Control Panel. It features a new high-contrast OLED display for improved pilot visibility. Dynan's marketing director, Michael Schofield, says, quote, The new Emergency Glide feature simplifies critical decisions and actions during an emergency, providing pilots with the tools they need to focus on flying the aircraft to a safe landing, end quote. 
The feature automatically activates when a pilot holds the NRST button. It will use pre-programmed information to engage autopilot and set the plane up at best glide speed. This will fly the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport, taking possible glide distance, winds, and terrain into consideration. The airport is then loaded into the COM radio airport slot. If no airfield is found, however, the system will pop up a notification and exit emergency glide. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.